good day and welcome to JCC Sunday Schools in Session, where Sunday School Matters to God. Please subscribe and hit that like button and be a part of the JCC family. Our Sunday School lesson today is titled, Daniel Prophesies the Son of Man Coming, from Daniel chapter 7, verses 9 through 14. Today our lesson is going to show the kingdoms of this world and how they relate to the kingdom of God. Daniel teaches us about the kingdom of God under the reign of the Messiah. So the book of Daniel shows us the apocalyptic prophecy, which means a prophecy of end times and God's judgment of the world during such time. So our lesson today will be different in that we will have to identify some symbolism in the scripture and we'll do our very best to explain some of it. But before we begin our lesson, let's answer the first four questions of our lesson to help us put some things in perspective. Question one says, should we always read the Bible literally? Now, if we fail to distinguish the different genres in the Bible and we begin to read, it can bring about confusion. So if something is intended literally, we should read it literally. If something's intended poetically, we should read it as poetry. Hence, we do not read Revelation the same way we do with Genesis or study Psalms the same way we do with Acts. This is why exegeting the scripture is so important in order to not put something in that should not be or take things out of context. Question two says, what are some characteristics of apocalyptic literature and why is this important when studying certain biblical books? When we understand some of the characteristics of apocalyptic literature, we have to take some of the things in context or see what those differences are. Some characteristics are eschatology, which is the end time study. There's also a messianic figure that is in the central theme of this as well. We'll see more visions and dreams. And you'll also see some things that are deliberately mysterious to us that helps us to see how the oppressive powers will come into play and how God's plan is to unfold and begin become victorious in the end. You also see angels playing a particular role during these type of apocalyptic literatures. And then there's a lot of symbolism that's related to animals and numbers. Then also the cosmic struggle between good and evil. These are characteristics you see during these type of uh, books in the Bible. Question three says, what kind of connections are there between Daniel and Revelation? If you have familiarity with Revelation, if you've ever studied it, you, you understand there's a lot of similar visions. And this is the thing that the two books share uh, together, that they show some symbolism in both books to kind of point to uh, apocalyptic type of uh, literature or apocalyptic type of uh, understanding. So you'll see those things that uh, make it con uh, a strong connection between the two books. Question four is, what is represented by the four beasts in Daniel 7 and the four sections of the statue in chapter 2? Most interpreters understand the four beasts of Daniel 7 to be similar to that in the dream of Nebuchadnezzar in chapter 2. Those four empires are Babylon, Medo, Persia, Greece, and Rome. So now let's get into our scriptures to see what it has to offer us today. Verse 9 says, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. Now question 5 says, who is this Ancient of Days? Daniel saw the Ancient of Days take his place on the throne, and this was the Almighty God himself. God takes his place to allow his ultimate plan to come to fruition. So the description of the ancient of days wearing a white garment and having hair like wool is also similar to the vision that John saw in the book of Revelation uh, of Christ. This here shows again how Christ is represented as the deity of God, how they are one in the same. But here Daniel is emphasizing that the Ancient of Days is God himself. And he's going to later show us Christ as he acknowledges him as the Son of Man. So the Bible, though, as we look at some symbolism, the white garment represents purity, 
righteousness, and honor. And hair like wool in the Bible, white represents again that purity. So we see in Revelation how Christ will be the very same image and symbolism of God as pure righteousness who has the same authority as God as well. The fiery throne and wheels are similar to Ezekiel's vision of God's throne in Ezekiel chapter 1. It says, as I looked at the living creatures, I saw a wheel on the ground beside each creature with its four faces. This was the appearance and structure of the wheels. They sparkled like topaz, and all four looked alike. Each appeared to be made like a wheel intersecting a wheel. As they moved, they would go in any one of the four directions the creatures faced. The wheels did not change directions as the creatures went. Their rims were high and awesome, and all four rims were full of eyes all around. When the living creatures moved, the wheels beside them moved, and when the living creatures rose from the ground, the wheels also rose. Wherever the spirit would go, they would go, and the wheels would rise among with them because the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheel. When the creatures moved, they also moved. When the creatures stood still, they also stood still. And when the creatures rose from the ground, the wheels rose with them because the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. Now, for many of us this year, as we go in and begin to exegete this and begin to really dig, dig deep into it, it is showing that these wheels also may have represented the cherubims or the seraphims who also had all of those eyes in every direction, how they stand and guard the, the kingdom of God. So we see here again, the vision of Ezekiel also is tied to the vision of Daniel as well. When it speaks of these here fiery throne and wheels that are, are, are in the presence of God. So the point is though, God's holiness will be on display at the day of judgment. And we will see how God's holiness will be executed as the ancient of days. He will take his rightful place and sit as the righteous judge to do great and mighty things as God looks down upon his earth, his creation, and begins to judge those very things. Verse 10 says, A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands, thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. See, Daniel saw a fiery stream that flowed from the presence of the Ancient of Days. Now, fire represents the brilliant manifestation of God's splendor, as well as the fierce heat of his judgment. We see here that God will be in place to bring about judgment. The Almighty is the righteous judge who will judge again us righteously. He will judge the world in a righteous manner. Daniel also saw thousands of angels serving him, as well as 10,000 upon 10,000 more standing before him, awaiting the judgment. Now, when we go and we begin to look at this right, this enormous crowd stands by the heavenly uh, courts to bring about judgment of God. He's going to judge the little horn and those who followed him. Now, Daniel 7 and 25 is not part of our lesson today, but the little horn will speak against the Most High and oppress his holy people. So the little horn will seek to change times and laws and will exert oppressive power over God's people for three and a half years. So we see little horn is ruling at this time when judgment comes. So the Bible identifies this little horn as the Antichrist, the ruler who will come, who will set up the abomination in Daniel 9, verse 27. Question six says, what was the purpose of the books being opened at judgment? The books were opened just like they were in Revelations 20 and 12, where all hum humanity will stand in judgment before God. Daniel is showing the wicked who have followed the little horn, this Antichrist, they will be judged by the divine. And as Revelations 20 and 12 said, the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the book, according to their works. We see they're going to be judged by what they did. So the point is, one day heaven's books will be opened, and there will be no escaping God's verdict, 
God will judge everybody righteously, and he will judge by what we have did while living here on this earth. Amen. To God be the glory. Verse 11 says, I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake, and I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed, giving to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. We see here in this verse, the horn and devil's vision continues to speak great words until the very end. It will not stop saying things. It's still trying to accuse those believers of God. It's still trying to push its agenda. But it's, it will be slain. See, the slain of the beast and those who follow him to the flames are depicted again in Revelations 19 and 20. It says, And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophets that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshiped his image. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. We see again God's ultimate judgment over those who uh, went against God's will. See, the fate of the beast should be a warning to all who rise up against God. Christ said, fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Coming from Matthew 10, verse 28. So we see it is more prevalent for us to fear God, to reverence God, to understand that God has ultimate power and authority, not temporary power and authority. So the other beasts, again, Daniel saw in his vision, they had authority removed from them, but they continued in some manner meaning the, the characteristics of them continue to linger around for a season and time. So the point is no human dominion, no matter how it, it seems to be powerful now, is safe from God's judgment. God ultimately will judge all. Now verse 13, now verses 13 and 14 read, I saw in the night vision, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Now, question seven, who was the son of man and what is the meaning of this expression? The one like the son of man refers to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, Daniel uses this title, Son of Man, as a messianic title. He comes with the clouds of heaven, receiving an everlasting kingdom, and all people shall serve him, he said. So when Christ returns again, it will be to reign as king, and with that comes all the rights and privileges of God the Father. Yes, Christ will come in and reign upon this earth as our righteous King, praise be to God. Question eight says, what is the significance of the Son of Man coming on the cloud of heaven? The person who appears before God in the form of a human being is of heavenly origin. He comes riding on the clouds of heaven and is clearly not in the image of a mere human being. See, the, the expression, like a Son of Man, identifies this final ruler of the world, not only as human, in contrast to the beast or those four world empires, he won't come in that way trying to rule over people and oppress them. He's going to come as the heavenly sovereign incarnate of God who comes on earth to rule uh, on earth like it is in heaven. Again, this is none other than Jesus who stands before the Father and receives that everlasting kingdom. We know this because Jesus repeatedly applied the title to himself all throughout the New Testament. Now, Daniel vision captured Jesus' humanity and his divinity. Christ, even at his trial when asked if he was the Christ, the son of the blessed, Christ responded, I am, and ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Now, the religious leaders 
accused him of blasphemy. But we see the title of man, son of man, that Daniel is trying to show us here. He was rightfully depicting himself. He was speaking truth, whereas they thought he was blaspheming. So the title of the Son of Man captures part of the mystery of Jesus' incarnation, that he is fully divine and still full, fully man. But the clouds here in Scripture is going to symbolize something to us. It symbolizes the presence of God, the Holy Spirit, and Christ. Why do I say that? Because clouds are well known as a sign of God's presence in the Old Testament. For example, in Genesis 9 and 13, God sets his bow in the cloud as a sign of his covenant with the earth, promising to never flood the world again. Now, clouds also combined with light are often used to symbolize the Holy Spirit. The clouds represent the Holy Spirit's guidance and presence and how it resounds and reveals the glory of God. Clouds appear around Jesus Christ and his ministry in the New Testament. For example, Jesus sent it into heaven on a cloud. And the Bible says he's going to return on that same cloud. But there are also sometimes that clouds are associated with judgment in the Bible. The phrase here that symbolizes Jesus' second coming and his role as judge of the living and the dead. Luke 21, 27, so Jesus says he will come in a cloud with power and great glory. During the reign of the final kingdom, the God of heaven will sit upon a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and it shall stand forever. We see that Christ, the kingdom that Christ sets up will last for eternity. There will never be anything that will come in and take his dominionship, take over his kingdom. Christ's rule will stand the test of time. To God be the glory. Now, the question is, how is kingdom of God used in the Bible? So concerning the kingdom of Christ in the Bible, it represents the present aspect and the future manifestation. Why do I say that? Christ, when he was on earth, he said the kingdom of God is at hand, saying it is present. It's, it's here during my earthly ministry. But it also shows us what we should be looking forward to. As we look forward, we will see that the kingdom of God will be the very uh, construct that we operate in, that it will be Christ's dominionship over this world, and we will be underneath that uh, authority so we can operate in it for eternity. To God be the glory. Question is, what kind of kingdom was given to the Son of Man? Unlike those passing kingdoms that we saw, those four beasts, those kingdoms will go away. They will pass. They, that their time of reign is seasonal. Christ's kingdom will be forever. See, it's trying to show us that even though during the, the, the time of the Great Tribulation, those kingdoms, like I say, will come to a place where all nations and all kindred and people and tongues will be a part of the kingdom of God. That all, once the Great Tribulation is over, all those kingdoms that have passed away have been judged. The rest of God's world, those who believe and trust in Jesus Christ, will be part of the kingdom. So this kingdom will stand before the lamb clothed with white robes. Now, white robes or white linen means righteousness. That will be clothed in righteousness. Remember, as the bloodstained banner is upon us, it gives us a clothing of righteousness because of the atonement of Jesus Christ. So these kingdoms of this world will be uh, with Christ for eternity. See, the kingdom of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Now, brothers and sisters, this brings about a conclusion to our lesson. So we've seen Daniel chapter 7 reveal what is to come of this world. So the Ancient of Days will reign in heaven, and he will deliver everlasting dominionship and glory to this new eternal kingdom that is going to be set up here on earth, which the Son of Man, our Lord and Savior, will reign. God will have what he desires from the very beginning with his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. What a time, what a time that will be. I can't wait to see and be able to be in the presence of our Lord and Savior. So God be the glory. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. 
please leave a thumbs up if you have, a comment or two, and subscribe to our channel. Well, until next time, come back same time, same channel. Be blessed now.